Hello everyone. Due to difficulties with the Minecraft thing, I'm going to do uh, a single tutorial on snapping things together. A lot of people want to do snapping in Unity but can't figure out how, so I figure I'll go ahead and show you. As you can see, this moves with a, a significant snap. It doesn't it snaps to some kind of grid <coughs> rather than just fluidly moving around. So, how does that work exactly? Well, we have a situation where uh, well, why, first off, why would you want to do it? And the reason you want to do it is because you want your rooms to line up uh, really easily rather than having to manually enter like the position to the last decimal point. You want to be able to just drag them into the right spot, and that's, uh, that's what we're doing here. We're able to drag them wherever we need them to be, and they'll just line up fine. Now, how you do it is the snapper script. This editor has nothing to do with it. This is just, for me, uh, doing the, the level editing. Uh, instead, the snapper is all that matters. And I'll show you the snapper script because it's pretty basic. The secret to the snapper script is this execute and edit mode key. And this will allow the system to uh, run it whenever you're editing that object in, uh, in edit mode. So this only runs when the object is actively being edited. So out here, when I am moving this room, this room and all of its children are having it the editor run but the other two rooms are not so it only runs on the um, on the active object in scene view but what it does is it means that this update gets called exactly like it would get called in play mode it gets called every you know 20 milliseconds or whatever um, roughly every frame it might actually be I think it is every frame exactly and that allows us to do anything we want in terms of the framing, in terms of, uh, you know, each frame we can do whatever we need to do. So what we're doing is down here at the end, and this is simply a very basic method of rounding positions off. And I allow myself a different X, Y, and Z step because these are hexes that move in different ways on each axis. Um, if you don't need that kind of complexity, you could just go with a very basic step. But you just average, you just round these things down and then set the position and it moves in a nice chunky manner. Now this wouldn't work if you were doing something with velocity because it keeps setting the position. So therefore every time you use the velocity, each time you use the velocity you end up uh, getting the position set back to wherever it was and the velocity doesn't do anything. But it works fine in editor mode because these, these gimbals here, these little widgets, uh, they actually snap to wherever your mouse is. So they'll, they'll work just fine with this situation. Now the logic up here is important and I'm going to go ahead and step through it with you. First off, if the game object is not active in the hierarchy, that means that we've selected it down here as a prefab, like so. And we don't want to do anything to the prefab. We don't want to change where the prefab position is. That's, that's nonsense. You'll get errors if you try anyway. The second thing we do is, if the game is playing, we destruct. And that's just so we don't have a whole bunch of um, pointless position setting in actual play mode. Uh, there are other ways to destroy these objects when you hit play, but this one works. Uh, and the third thing we're doing is this is a little bit of a complex logic system that's specifically to allow uh, objects to have children that are also snappers. So in this case, when I move this, it's got this lamp here. And this lamp is also a snapper it's got a much finer grain. You can see that it's got a much finer grain, um, but it is still a snapper. Now, if I was not uh, correctly uh, set up to do this, this, that piece of logic, then it might get run before the room script gets run, which means that as you were dragging it, the lamp would get updated. It would check for its drag, and then it would move, and then the parent then the parent room would say, okay, now where am I going? And that would mean that as you were dragging it around, the lamp would just be wandering all over the map, and it would make no sense. <clears throat> now that's a little weird, because sometimes it doesn't happen, depending on how the, uh, um, uh, how the prefabs work, because prefabs can make it so that the child objects don't count as being edited, and therefore execute in edit mode doesn't run. But don't depend on that. Anyhow, it's pretty easy to fix. All you have to say is, if there is a ch an active transform, and it's not us, and we are a child of whoever it is, then don't snap. Because that means that we've selected our parent room, and we're going to be dragged along with it anyway. We don't need to update ourselves. Now, be a little bit careful with transform.isChildOf, because as far as I can tell, you count as a child of yourself, um, which, was something, which is why this is necessary here. 
All right, now that's a snapper. If that's all you need, you can stop now. But I always have the problem that when I click on these walls, for example, the wall mesh would get selected rather than the parent mesh. And that was always really annoying. So I, go, I went ahead and implemented a dodge script so that I wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. And now whenever I click on the wall script, the parent script is selected. And that includes clicking here. <clears throat> now if I absolutely needed to get rid of that wall script, I can turn off the hex room, and now I can select it. See? So that's pretty fun. You can see that it has a dodge script attached to it. Everything with a dodge script attached to it will not be clickable in edit mode until you disable its parent. Pretty interesting. Anyhow, uh, that works by having this dodge script attached, as I mentioned. So the dodge script is super simple. All the dodge script does is self-destruct. That's right. It literally just destroys itself whenever you hit play. That's all it does. And that's because it's only here as a marker. We, we, we need it to exist in edit mode, but we don't need it to do anything. Excuse me. So why would we need something to exist but not do anything? Well, because the actual power here is in the editor. So we've got a class called Dodge Editor. And this is just about the simplest editor you could possibly imagine. So let's go through it as if you had never seen an editor before. To create an editor, you need to put it in the editor um, directory. You need to add using Unity Editor. And you need to tell it what you're editing. And in this case, I'm editing the class Dodge. And then you descend from editor rather than mono behavior. And after that, this on inspector GUI, this will get called instead of the normal inspector GUI. So over here on the right, when I was to click on something, this is the inspector GUI. And you can see that I've created a custom hex room editor as well, and it's quite complicated. But we'll never get to see the dodge editor because it literally, uh, the functionality of the dodge editor is to not exist. And you can see that down here. If the dodge editor gets shown, it literally says, wait, I don't want to be shown. Don't don't click on me. Don't select me. Select my parent instead. And that's what this is. Selection.activeGameObject equals dodge transform parent game object. But let's go ahead and step through the logic involved before that. So first off, we do the on inspector GUI, and that's so that uh, when we are down here in prefabs and we select these guys, we do get this GUI. There's nothing really interesting in it, but we didn't want to just completely not have a GUI there. Then we go ahead and we grab our actual dodge object because target is of class object and we need to cast it into class dodge. And then we can actually do some logic on it. So first we say, if it's not in the active hierarchy, then don't do any of this inspector GUI stuff. That means that if we're clicking on it as a prefab, it doesn't try and unclick on itself. We also say, if it doesn't have a parent, then don't unclick yourself. So that means that if we were to add one of these into the scene, we can click on it because it doesn't have a parent, so it doesn't try and dodge. And then lastly, we have a little piece of logic that says, if our parent room is not enabled, then don't unclick us. So that means that we can always go in and edit a parent room by disabling the hex editor, the hex room editor. So that's what I showed you before. We turn off the hex room script, and you can see that all of that stuff vanishes, and now we can click on that wall. And it's like, okay, fine, you can click on me now. And then, if all of those things pass, we unclick ourselves. We say, oh wait, we really shouldn't be active. You didn't mean to click on us. You meant to click on our parent. Anyhow, that's how I do all of this jazz. And it works pretty well. Um, and I hope it helped you out.